Hi guys, today we're looking at the TP-Link TLER5120 dual or multi-WAN load balancing router and I'm having a glass of wine. Before we start, let's talk about what dual WAN is, for example, and let me do a quick explanation using the miracle of modern technology. So normal internet connection for most home users has a single WAN or internet connection. So you've got your phone line in the case of... Uh, DSL or VDSL, magnificent rendition of a phone line. You've got your router box, which could be wireless or not wireless, and your router manages the connection of your phone line to your users, gives you wireless, and connects to your computers and other devices. And this is a sort of a rather Picasso-like version of a computer. Excellent. So in my case, with a relatively poor phone line that results in relatively slow speeds and with uh, an abundance of teenagers in my house misery. So I have adopted a dual WAN approach. So what this is, is two phone lines. So two telephones there. Magnificent. Sorry about this, but I don't have advanced graphics capabilities uh, either in my brain or on my computer. Two phone lines, um, a special dual or multi-WAN router, which is what we're talking about today, which manages those connections to provide the internet service to all the devices in your home or business. And to the users, they don't know any different. They don't know that there's two phone lines or whatever. And the router balances the load between different users between the two phone lines, and you get double the speed, assuming that you get the same speed on each connection. And the router takes care of all of the complicated business of sharing the load on the two lines. The downside, of course, is that in order to achieve this, you've got two phone lines, two internet service providers, two everything, twice the cost. Oh, well, not everything in life is uh, free. Isn't that right? Let's have a look and see what we get inside the box. It's a anonymous brown box. This is more of a industrial or a business class device. As you can see, it's a full rack size device. It comes with the usual paperwork. To be honest with you, I should probably start paying a bit more attention to some of this stuff, but uh, I never normally even open the box. Ah, this is the console cable, which enables you to connect a serial port on a PC or device into uh the router itself and access the console but you can access the console over the network so i haven't actually bothered using mine i just uh use telnet and connect into it the vast majority of people will probably never even use this or need to use it so i wouldn't worry too much about it you get a mounting kit which basically consists of some metal brackets and some screws and what else ah mains power cable. Nice thing about this is it doesn't have a power brick, a bit more professional. The power supply is built into the unit itself, so it just uses a kettle lead to connect to the mains, which is excellent. Although, not a bad idea to connect it to UPS if you've got one. Okay, on the back, here's the power input, and there's actually an earthing, separate earthing point, which is uh, nice. Full metal construction, very sturdy. And on the front, let's just have a, take a little bit of time to look at these ports. There's the console port that you see with the uh, Serial connection, a reset switch, a LAN port. Far left is the main WAN port, so that's your primary connection generally. And then you've got three user configurable ports, which can either be LAN or WAN ports. So you can actually have up to four separate WAN or internet connections. Um, or you can have one WAN connection and four LAN connections. Or any combination of the... Uh, of the uh, previously mentioned. So you can check, and we'll see that inside the so software. Actually, you can hear, it's a nice construction. Really heavy duty device. It's not particularly cheap, 130 pounds in the UK. Um, and actually, the other thing to remember about this importantly is no wireless and no modem. So you'll need another device to connect to anything wireless, and you'll need another device to connect to the internet, a modem. So these are the four little rubber feet. I'm just gonna stick these on. Because I'm not going to rack out mine. I am quite geeky, but I don't have an, uh, my own network rack inside my house. Okay. Now, my plan is to double my internet speed uh, because I have maxed out my single phone line. But just for demonstration purposes, we're going to use this rather crappy D-Link modem. And we're going to plug it into the uh, one port here. Slightly annoying if you're a home user that all the connections are on the front. Convenient, but does tend to make the desk a bit messy. 
Okay, so I'm going to connect uh, my laptop into this uh, LAN port here. I will fire everything up and get some lights flashing and see if it's working. But um, obviously until I've got it connected into a plug line, we won't actually be able to see anything. So that's how it works. All right, green lights. That's a good sign. Okay, first boot seems to me like we've got signs of life. But that's how you would connect it up. Modem into WAN port, computer into LAN. And then obviously if you want to add wireless, you're going to have to get a wireless access point and connect that into your network. Brilliant. I'm actually going to have two WAN connections, two modems connect to the internet. Um, let's have a quick look in the manual after telling you I don't look at them at all and find the configuration. I'm particularly interested in the logon details for the web UI, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Okay, here we are. So we find on this page default IP address, okay, which is shown there. 192.168.01 and it says default username and password but without actually telling you what they are. Well I've looked it up and it is actually small small letters admin for both the username and password by default but obviously you'll want to change that as soon as you can. Okay so what we'll do now is excuse the blurring we'll just uh, log in and have a look. So username, default username and password, login there we go. Right, so we're now logged into the web interface and I've blurred out my IP address so that you can see it. But very conventional looking, kind of web-based interface, simple but effective with lots of options on it. It's quite an advanced piece of equipment here. It has lots of user interface uh, and options. You can see I've got two links up. So you can see 1.1 one, one and 1.2. One, Those are my two internet connections through modems. You can see that they're both alive and running. You can also see that this unit is running with almost no load on the CPU. It's quite a powerful unit, obviously, with load balancing and the other capabilities. It does need a bit of processing oomph to manage that. Okay, so we're going to have a quick look through here. You can see I've got two one ports, two orange ones, three LAN ports, and I've selected the radio button for two. And you can see configurable up at the top, one, one, and one, two. That's where you put your PPOE details in. You connect your, like your internet login details and stuff. So... I don't know why, but you have to select PPOE, Russian PPOE or something. And this is where you put in all your login details. Obviously, my login details aren't in there. In case you're interested in trying to pirate my internet connection, you'll have no luck. Okay, lots of configura configuration, traffic control, um, statistics on where, how much data is being shared over which one you're using, and the all-important load balancing settings, which is how the router decides to share the burden of the internet usage across two connections. Okay, um, you can see you've got various configuration options to route traffic and set up load balancing in accordance with the way that you want. Just a thing I wanted to touch on very quickly and importantly here, in order to open up access to the WAN side for the um, web interface, you need to put this setting into the um, remote management page otherwise it won't work it took me a while to find that out it's not in the manual so worth worth um, make, making a note of that you've got some various diagnostics okay you can uh, do a ping from here and check the performance of either of your WAN connections let's ping the BBC and see what they're up to okay fine okay let's have a quick look and do a speed comparison so what I've done here is I've got um, using BitTorrent Normally, your load balancing router will only allow you to max out your connection on one of the WAN connections, which works fine for the majority of users who will never even notice. But if you want to check the full bandwidth availability, then something like BitTorrent will do that for you. And here what I've done is I've done a BitTorrent download. I'm downloading actually a Linux image, I think, 1.4 gigabytes. What I've done is I've... Um, done it with both WANs operating and I've done it with one WAN operating. Now in my case, um, one of my connections is VDSL, one is ADSL. One happens to be twice as fast as the other. So what I get is with both WANs operating, you can see I get something like three megabytes a second. And with one WAN operating, I get one megabyte per second. Because obviously I'm operating the slower of the two links. Okay, so this is basically, all this is about is just proving to you that it does actually double, or in my case, triple my internet speed um, by using more than one connection to the internet. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the downside to this, obviously, is I have two internet service providers, two phone lines, and two 
line rentals, ISP charges, and everything else. But for me and my family, and because of where I'm located, this makes sense for me. The advantage of this box is it keeps it all nicely in one box, okay? Um, and the users in my house have no idea about what's going on. To them, they've just got the internet. But I know, obviously, that the internet load is being shared between the two one connections, and um, the cleverness all happens inside the TP-Link router. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details of um, how I manage my wireless and other stuff. You can ask me questions about that if you like. But basically, remember, this box has no modems and no wireless capability. You need to add those separately. Okay, let's have a look at the TP-Link website. They've got a good website, okay? Um, it's easy to find. This is the unit, as you can see. Some details of the specification. Okay, and under the support tab, which is obviously always worth checking, what you get is you get facts, questions, okay, um, the different hardware versions. Mine is the version 2, uh, which is currently on sale. And here you can see where to download the latest firmware. The latest firmware is actually done in 2014 on the website, but if you get in touch with support, they will send you a 2015 update. Also wanted to show people the fact that there are emulators on the TP-Link website. This is actually the emulator for another load balancing route they've got. And so if you want to go and have a play with the um, web UI, you can go and do that there. Here's a picture of my router running. I thought it was interesting. You see the little orange light on the um, LAN collection, connection there? That's going to my home plug, which doesn't run a gigabit. But the, otherwise, this is a gigabit router. So um, fully functional and working correctly. Um, and I've not had really any major issues with this. So, Okay, um, let's talk pluses and minuses on whether you need one. Okay, do you need one? Well, if you can't find any other way of increasing your internet or connectivity speed at home, then this, and you've got a second line or you install a second line, this is an option for you. This device does the job. It's solid construction, relatively good web interface. It's cheap compared to other devices of this type, more business class devices. It's reliable and good, well configurable. Okay. Um, downsides, no wireless. You need separate modems. Here you see my two Zykesville modems doing their job. And the setup, you need a little bit more time and focus to understand what's going on. But ultimately, it gets the job done, and I'm pretty happy. I think you've just got to decide whether you want to spend the extra money on having two phone lines and everything else to get the extra speed. If you do, then this can do it for you. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. See ya.